a question people often ask, right, about God or about a question they might ask us who believe in God. If God is so good, then why do bad things happen? If God is so good, why are there wars? If God, God is so good, why, why is there famine? If God is so good, why do people get sick? And it's, it's a difficult question when people ask it, because generally when people ask it, it's because they have experienced one of these things. They have experienced grief, they have experienced loss, they have experienced illness. So it's, it's not always uh, the appropriate time for, for theology. You know what I mean? It's not always the appropriate time for an in-depth look into the meaning of suffering. Uh, because at times just, just, uh, people's own emotions and sentiments can be very charged, you know, so it, it, can be, it can be difficult to answer that question in that particular moment. One way of, of answering the question, <clears throat> which I find is, is, is quite effective, is often the question is pitched from the perspective of God is powerful, God is comfortable. God is fine. He's up there in heaven. He's got angels taking care of him. He's got clouds all around him. All is good. He's basking in the sun. And then there we are down on earth in this pit of misery, misfortune, briars, brambles, thistles, dirt, and illness. And everything is going wrong. And he's just, uh, not today. You know, it's, it's this kind of image that God is all powerful, but just couldn't really be bothered with us. And then, you know, why would I love or serve a God like that? Why would he deserve adoration? He doesn't really deserve anything if that's his attitude. Okay. So, at times, the question is asked with the wrong perception of God. And as, as Christians, as Catholics, we always must defend the image of God, especially of God as Father. So uh, a helpful way in answering the question of, of, of why would God allow suffering is, is the fact that God suffered himself, right? the cross. So we don't have this indifferent God up in the clouds, you know, being fed grapes as he lies on his cloud, uh, who doesn't care about us down below. But we have a God who's actually willing to come down into the dirt with us and suffer and die. So it's, it, it's kind of, it's, it's not exactly answering the question, but it's, it's a way of answering the question which, which shows that it's not that God doesn't care. And it's not that God is distant. And it's not that God doesn't suffer or doesn't actually know what you're going through because he has suffered and died just like us. And that, that's very, very, because that changes things then, because then God isn't indifferent. God isn't aloof. God isn't just powerful but couldn't be bothered, indifferent to, to, to our suffering. That's not who he is. That's not who God is. That's not how God is. So just <clears throat> excuse me, two points on today's gospel. Uh, Jesus is walking on the water. Incidentally, when <clears throat> before he, he, does, he works this miracle, he spends the night in prayer. There are a few occasions where, where Jesus does. Obviously, Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer, but there are a few occasions that the Gospels underline to make it very, very clear that Jesus spent some time in prayer and then something happened. So one was when the, he was about to choose his 12 apostles. He spends the night in prayer and then chooses them. Here we have he spends the night in prayer, then walks on the water, and then we have Gethsemane, he spends the night in prayer, and then goes to his passion. So it's, it's underlining something very, very powerful here. Uh, there are a few different things that we can bring in. We'll try, try not to get too lost in detail, but one is that if Jesus can do this, it means he can do whatever he wants with, with his physical body. You know, he can walk on water. He can defy physics uh, and walk on water. And we see... We, where we saw recently yesterday <clears throat> that Jesus <coughs> can do what he wants with created things. He can do what he wants with bread. So you combine those two miracles, right? Jesus can do what he wants with his body. Jesus can do what he wants with food, with created things, with bread. And so then he's able to do what he wants with his body and bread and make the Eucharist. So these two miracles overlap in some way. At the time, they wouldn't have seen that. But we do. From a Catholic perspective, we can see that Jesus can do what he wants with his physical body. He can do what he wants with created things. So if he wishes, he can absolutely create the Eucharist. That he can absolutely be present in, 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 in every uh, species, um, in both species, uh, after the valid celebration of Holy Mass. So that's just one little, little detail, if I may. But from, from our own perspective, then 
they've got the apostles in the boat and they see Jesus walking on the water. Now, they don't recognize him. So they're in, they're in, they're in a storm, right? They're in a mess. <laughs> they're in a, and if you're in a, like, they wouldn't have had big boats. They were average sized boats at best. If you've ever been to the Holy Land, the fishing boats, were, they're not very impressive. Um, so if there's a storm there, like, this could cost you your life. Okay, so you've got, you know, you see, like, the, the, you see this wave coming, you're like, okay, hold on to something, and zhoosh, poof, down she goes again, in the nose, goes into the, into the water, like, come up, come up, come up, come up, all right, up she comes again, and now there's, a, you know, a fair, more, a fair bit more water in the boat than there really should be, all right, let's get the buckets, and we're getting the buckets out, and we're reading the waves again, okay, hold on, poof, like, it's very, very unpleasant, okay, uh, so then they see Jesus walking, now they don't recognize him. And uh, I, I, just, I, I, find that, I find that kind of interesting because even in a storm, you kind of, you know, you recognize how people walk. I, I, I don't know. But uh, not that Jesus had an odd walk, but I mean, you know, you, you, you know, you, see, you recognize a person's body language, you see them. Anyway, they don't recognize him. It is a ghost, they said, cried out in fear, fear. But at once Jesus called out to them, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered, Lord, if it is you, Tell me to come to you across the water. Okay. Details are always important here. Um, it is a ghost. They cried out in fear. Now, maybe they felt this is actually the end. and This is like the kind of the grim reaper come to take us because we're actually going to drown. Uh, they, were, they were afraid, though. They were afraid. And these are grown men who, by the way, many of them, their, their actual job was to be fishermen. So this is kind of normal. This is kind of part of their job, you know, they, they, you'd have the occasional storm and yet they're afraid. So there was something, this was not a good situation to be in. And Jesus calls out, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. So often in, in, in our lives, in our experience, uh, we're going to have occasions where we're going to be afraid, where, where what we thought we had control over, we realize we actually don't. We had very limited control over things. And now someone, someone gets sick, or the economy takes a downturn, or the weather goes bad, or uh, we had planned to do something with a youth group, and now a couple of the girls or people or families have canceled, and now everything has gone belly up. All these sorts of things, like just things go wrong. Or then within ourselves, we're just struggling with some stupid sin that we just, that just can't seem to let go of it just before I know it I'm after saying something stupid again uh, how didn't I why didn't I see why why does my brain kick in after I speak so what is that about like and then if you and then if you wait for your brain to kick in first then people talk to you you're like you know so how are things and you're like good <laughs> and you look a bit vacant you know so but you're, 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 you're just trying to trying to control what comes out of your mouth my goodness anyway so it can happen that we just fall again. You're just annoyed at yourself, like you're in this kind of storm of, of just annoyance and self kind of self, maybe not self-deprecation, but just frustration with yourself. And, uh, and we're striving for, trying for virtue, striving for virtue, and it's just, it's just, it's just difficult. It's just not, not coming together as we'd like. And then in these moments, like Jesus calls out to us in our storm and says, courage, courage, I'm here, do not be afraid. Now, interestingly, in the case of illness, the Lord saying he's here, it doesn't necessarily take away the illness. Now, it, sometimes it may, there are, there are miracles, absolutely, or the Lord can also work through medical professionals, absolutely. But there are other occasions where, where where, like in the case of grief, for example, the person who passed away, that they're not, they're not coming back. So when the Lord says, courage, it is I, he's, he's here with us. It doesn't necessarily mean, though, that the cross is gone, that the cross is absent, that the cross is taken away. But we have divine assistance. We have God's help. We have the presence of Jesus with us. And so in that storm where we're not alone. So the Lord, I mean, this is, this is, this is, these are divine words. Courage, courage, I am here. Do not be afraid. But if you've just been diagnosed with cancer and someone tells you, oh, the, you know, the Lord is with you, 
you might have kind of the same reaction as, as Peter. Like, uh, um, yeah, that's nice. I don't fully believe that, though. I don't really believe because I feel pretty miserable. And my illness, my sickness, my grief is really dragging me down at the moment. So I know I don't actually feel God's presence at all. And what does Peter do? Like, Lord, if you're there, if you're there, show me or can kind of work some sort of miracle. Can kind of give me, can kind of help me to help me to believe, and kind of help me to believe that, that that it is you in some way. Kind of show me that 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 this is you. That this isn't just a ghost or make believe or, or wishful thinking. And it's it's an unusual thing to say because to be honest, if I were Peter getting thrashed around in this boat, I would say, Lord, if it's you, would you mind calming the storm? Because like, that would be maybe a little more what I would think, but far be it for me to suggest anything to St. Peter. He got things fairly right in the end. Um, but he says, no. He says, Lord, if it's you, ask me to come out in the water to you. Very interesting. Why would you say that? Very interesting. So the Lord says, come. So now you have to actually get in a storm, in a storm now. Your boat getting tossed around. You have to get out of this boat. So the boat is heaving all over the shop and you're holding onto the side. You're trying to, get, trying to get out elegantly, you know, while you're getting tossed around and one leg out and the other leg out and then you're trying to give a little push into the water to say, well, Mike, will this actually hold my weight? Because I kind of overdid breakfast there this morning. And you're pushing on, and, you're, and, it's, and, and, and it's like, so you, remember, it's not flat. Like, so the waves are going up and down and it's still holding your weight and you've one foot out and it's, why did, I, <laughs> why did I ask Jesus this? Why did I say, let me come out in the water to you? Why couldn't I just say, if, Lord, if it's you, what's your mother's name? Because that would have been, that would have been easier. Okay, so here we go, second foot, you know, and out goes the second foot, and then you're kind of, you know, giving a bit of a, a thump to see is it holding, and it is, and now you have to actually let go of the boat. And there you are on these waves, getting lifted up and down. Remember, the, the storm has not calmed yet. So the waves lifting you up and down, getting kind of tossed around, and there's Jesus. We don't know how far away, but he was within earshot, so 50 yards maybe. And he starts walking towards, towards Jesus. Again, back to our experiences where, where in, in, in our grief or hurt or pain, we, we call out to the Lord and, and uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that the storm stops. Jesus is here, but at times so is the cross. But if Jesus is here, then I have what I need because I have God. And then the Lord asks us to come, come to him. So take, take a step towards me in faith. In faith, this is actually, it's a bit actually nonsensical to walk on water. It's kind of impossible if you've ever tried. It ends very quickly and somewhat in a moist fashion. Um, but in order to actually walk on water, this is like, this is, this is, it doesn't work. So come to me, do something, take a step in faith and you will see the miracle. Take a step in faith and you will see the miracle in your life. So, Lord, I entrust this thing to you. I entrust the situation, this illness, problem, difficulty in faith that if I do, I will see the miracle. Now, the miracle doesn't necessarily mean immediate healing. Of course not. Be there are numerous reasons for that. Like, eventually, we do have to go. So God can keep physically healing us because eventually we have to leave Earth. We have to leave this world for something better, but eventually we have to go. So eventually we have to let people, we have to let them go. We have to, we have to allow God to work his plan. So, so just because we pray doesn't necessarily mean that the, what we ask for we will get in the way we ask for it at the time we ask for it. So, but we do entrust ourselves to the Lord, believing and knowing that if we do, we will see the miracle. And that miracle might be consolation. That miracle might be acceptance. That miracle might be, uh, as, as, as I've often heard from people of faith, when someone, they're very close to and the, the family passes away, and then they say, you know, I just, I, just felt, I just felt carried. I just felt carried through the whole week, m weeks, months, difficulty. Uh, or afterwards, I just felt like someone or something was carrying me. So that, that's your miracle. Rather than bringing the person back, it's getting you through it consoling you. Courage. It is I. I am here. Do not be afraid. And so then Peter's walking across to the Lord and again the storm is still raging. He's getting so waves lifting him up and down, spray in the face and wind and everything. And then he looks back and there's the boat just a little bit too far away. 
and there was Jesus not exactly beside me yet, so I'm kind of in the middle. I'm not holding Jesus' hand yet, and I now have no safety net. I have no boat to grab onto either, so I'm out, I'm out in the middle. And it's at that point where he looks around and says, oh dear, and, and starts to sink. This can, can, this can kind of happen to us too, where in, in our faith journeys, we had maybe a, a, a safety net experience, a pilgrimage or a conversion or a retreat or something that really lifted us up and just made us think, that's it, this faith thing is fantastic. Um, but then we have to walk with it on a daily basis. And then the difficulties, the, 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 the challenges of life can kind of drain that out from us. And we, we need the Lord and we're, 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 we hope we're walking towards him, we're trying to walk towards him, but we don't necessarily feel his consolation immediately. So I think I just, I, I, I think St. Peter's fantastic. I think he's, um, I get him, I'm a bit impetuous like him. But he cries out and he says, Lord, save me, he cried. And Jesus put out his hand at once and held him. What a beautiful line. Jesus put, so that might mean that, that, well, if he put out his hand at once, he must have been either pretty close to him or he was able to make, the, make up the distance pretty quickly. Either way, he puts out his hand and held him. I just, I just, I love that image. Remember, the storm still hasn't abated, like, so that they're, they're still getting thrashed around. But Jesus is right there with them. Courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. I'm here. Lord, save me. I'm right here. And he holds him. What, just what an amazing analogy for, for, for real life and for every, the, our, our everyday experiences. Why did you doubt? And as they got into the boat, which means they walked back to the boat, then the storm drops. So our lives can be, they can be messy, they can be stormy, they can be unpredictable. Uh, they mightn't go according to our plans. But like, just to, to have this, this image, right, of, of, of the storm throwing us around, and yet Jesus right there saying to us, courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Lord, save me. And he stretches out his hand and embraces you. So we pray for all of those who are suffering at the moment. We pray for ourselves on our own spiritual journey, for those who are ill, <coughs> for those who are losing hope, for those who are feeling a little, a little lost, a little at sea, Lord, we pray for your intervention in their lives, that they might reach out to you, call out to you, and experience the miracle of your presence. Amen.